Hi, Professor. Uh, this is Han. In my presentation, I'll talk about a digital twin in power systems. So what is digital twin? It's a, based on NASA's definition, it's a simulation of a system that based on historic or real-time sensor data. So by other definitions, it's based on expert knowledge and it's an accurate simulation, or it can depict process or performance. So there's the physical system in the real space, the virtual uh, model in the virtual space, and the, the, the connection of data between them, and they can perform services for the real system. For the digital twin, the, the synchronization with the real-time, real-world data is very important because the DT models, they're not perfect models. So if it keeps running without synchronization with real data, it could really deviate from the real condition. Uh, also, the, the system that the digital twin is trying to model does not need to be a real system, a, a tangible system. It could be a, like a cyber system or a cyber physical system. It could be an intangible system. So now we know what is a digital twin. Let's look at some characteristic of different uh, digital twin models. And as you can see in, in this PPT, uh, it's different based on different fidelity level or executional speed and accuracy. So uh, in this fidelity level, the, the topology model only provides description of structure, components, and there's no mathematical description of their relationships. And the static model uh, describes the system with input-output behaviors the uh, the dynamic models they, they have they're mapping to all the systems behaviors relationship and process and by equations and codes and they can respond to any internal and external changes of the system and it's the right model for us to use to model the power system uh, if the executional speed is much faster than the real system, uh, it can be used to to derive controls or forecast or scheduling, as you can see here on the right. Uh, if it runs a little bit faster or equal to the real system, it could be used to perform real-time simulation, to run real-time analysis, uh, to perform anomaly checks, as you can see in here, and uh, if it is slower, it could be, it's probably cheaper, so it could be used for design purposes or plan purposes. So based on different accuracies, uh, there's twin. A twin uses uh, all the internal confidential data of the real system, but siblings uh, uses open data, and the twin is, the twin maps to all the details of the system, while the sibling uh, maps to part of it. Well, the cousin uh, is a conjecture model of the system. So there are also different approaches and a modern method for the power system digital twin. So there's the white model, as you can see in here. So it's a phys physical based model and it's inside structure is entirely the same as the real system. And it, it needs a lot of formulas, equations, real system data, and characteristic of the power system. So, uh, and not only that, it could use some other parameters or data as well. So for example, the HVAC system, you, you probably need to model the the room or place you're trying to heating or cooling as well. So you're gonna have to model it with the uh, insulation factors, ventilation, temperature changes. Uh, it's very costly and difficult to, to compose this white model data. And then there is a black model. 
black box model. So it's a model that the, the entire model needs to be trained by data. So it uses machine learning, big data, uh, AI, and it's easier to, to integrate the black model into a code simulation uh, as a subsystem. And some researchers uh, propose that like the, there's the potential that the white model, the white model uh, could be used to create data sets to train the black model. And here is also the gray model. It's a hybrid model of the white model and the black models. It's similar to the system, but part of it need to be trained because it could be simpler to, to use the data-driven method to train it. The model-based approach is better to be used for simpler systems or low-dimensional system because it does not have the capacity as a data-driven approach to process a huge amount of data sets. Uh, also, model-based approach cannot, cannot be used for modeling when the system topology, some part of the system or some parameters are not available. A research indicates that uh, the, a key to establish the a situation awareness for digital twin is from di uh, information mining. It, it, it could be tons of data, like large data sets uh, in form of large random matrices. And those matrices, they, they could be high dimensional vector math problems. And it, it's not easy to be solved by traditional uh, transformations. So here, the machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence could be very useful in dealing with these problems. So, and research, the research pr also present two methods, as you can see here on, on the left, to handle these problems. One is random matri matrix theory for big data analytic. There's also the deep learning uh, for data modeling. The figure on the right is the framework of a power system digital twin that researchers proposed. So as you can see, there is the, uh, the real system, the power system on the bottom and the digital twin on top and the operator. So, and you can see the data flow. So in task one, the, the data sets are feed into the digital twin for modeling and analytics. And in task two, uh, the, it supports the, the decision makers to make the decisions and then it's feed back into the digital twin for, and this process can iterate until the, the optimal decision is made. And then the decision is sent to the actuator uh, for the converters to, to manage the smart grid. So and there's also the human interface here for additional input, a command or, or corrections. Now we've talked about the framework to develop a digital twin for power system. Let's look at its applications. And one research uh, categorized the applications in the following categories. So it could be used to evaluate or forecasting, generation, consumption, storage, and different capacities or it could be used to test control setting different modes, or it could be used as health monitoring or different assessment or maintenance forecast. Uh, it could also be used as algorithm control, verification, calibration. It can also be used for design purpose or a personnel training purposes. In the following part of this presentation, I'll provide some examples and applications uh, for a different purpose, digital twin uh, from researchers. Uh, as you can see in this one, it's a online analysis digital twin uh, for power system. It's, I think it's a very important application because the online analysis digital twin is ac applicable in so many part of the model system. For example, you can use to uh, model a, a digital twin for a substation. As you can see in the figure, uh, the upper path is the online analysis process before, uh, without digital twin. 
and you can see the data is fit in here and get processed by SCADA, a low flow snapshot will be created and DSA will run online analysis. But now with the digital twin, it's a parallel path uh, with it, it's, uh, as you can see in the bottom part here. So uh, the digital twin consists of two parts, uh, the, the complex event processing engine and the network analysis model. The network analysis model is hosted on a data grid and is updated in real time uh, by the SCADA and the state estimation. So, and it's updated real fast in real time with only a sub-second delay. And any change in the, in the network analysis model will be published as change events uh, and send it to the uh, complex event processing engine. And the, 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 the CEP engine will then drive the machine learning machine learning based DSA engine to, to run security assessment. And, and this process is only taking a few seconds to complete. There are many features and advantage of this online analysis digital twin. First, it only takes a sub-second for the virtual model to, to be synchronized with the real power grid. Uh, also, the, the, the virtual model is hosted on a data grid, as you can see on the figure on the right. The, on the data grid, uh, there's a virtual model and there's the data and algorithm in it. Uh, the, the, because the data is already in the model, so when simulation orders uh, comes, the algorithm will be applied directly to the model object and run the data. Um, this in-memory computing method uh, can reduce the latency uh, caused by data movements. Um, in addition, it utilizes parallel computing for efficiency. And also, as you can see, the, the complex event processing engine on the bottom here, there is the, the real engine, memory, state, state machine, and the, its memory is also hosted on data grid. And then the next part is the, 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 the machine learning based uh, solution architecture that would perform uh, fast security assessments. So it functions, uh, it needs to be trained with training cases first, and then it can be loaded into the data grid. Uh, it could be the DT's built-in intelligence. This application is a DT in network microgrid to improve the uh, system resilience against cyber attacks. So there's, uh, as you can see, there's three layers and the, the bottom layer is the right layer here. So, and there's a DC microgrid clusters and they're connected to the DC bus aggregate gated then at the PCC to the grid. And how it functions is that the tertiary controller send power sharing factor to secondary controller and then send control loss to the uh, microgrid clusters. The purpose of this is to make sure the equal relative power sharing. Uh, this hybrid digital twin has a physical twin and a cyber twin. The physical twin represents real-time balancing of the real model. And the cyber twin represents convergence rules to eliminate cyber and physical mismatch. So under cyber attack situations, so there would be a mismatch between the digital twin and the real measurement. So the, the attack can be detected and coped with. This application provides a digital twin framework for microgrid security. This Angel digital twin framework they propose can merge the simulation and control process for the power grid. Uh, in abnormal conditions, the DT can interact with the power system uh, to provide correct corrective instructions. Uh, What's special about this one is that the digital, this digital twin requires a rather accurate modeling 
to model both the cyber and physical layer of the smart grid. Uh, this, this will cause the increase in accuracy and the fidelity of the model, which will significantly increase computational complexity. Um, this, this is also one challenge that many digital twin uh, approaches facing. So the, the thing is to, to properly balance the model fidelity and computational complexity. Uh, but in this case, uh, they also used co-simulation method uh, and also they applied the parallel computing method to simulate systems at the same time to improve efficiency. So, uh, and also the physical twin and digital twin will, will run and compare to see if there's a big mismatch to identify risks, security risks. Um, what's interesting about this, this digital twin is that it can identify breaches and evaluate damage to adapt the system. So it can have this self-healing ability. Here are some other applications in digital twin. So the first one here is the DT based on deep learning to detect anomalies in smart grid. It uses convolutional neural network. Uh, it's just like the photo recognition. The buses are like the pixels. So the DT scan the time series data to detect anomaly. Uh, also, they add in the artificial noise in the training process of the network to increase the system resilience. There's also DT research and application on HVAC load and energy storage or fault diagnosis. And I will cover more of the frameworks and applications in my literature review. Mm, that's it for my presentation. Thank you, Professor.